Should men cry? Definitely, mate. Aye, of course. If this old saying but like strong men shouldn't cry, what do you think about it? Huh? I think it's a lot of rubbish, to be honest with you, mate. You know what I mean? Uh, we're all the same, aren't we? What about, what about yourself? What's your story, if you don't mind sharing? Well, my story is, man, I've got PTSD, ADHD, and that. Uh, when I was a young boy, I got taken into care. Uh, my ma had cancer, my ma passed away when I was 10. Then I, I had uh, I started drinking and stuff like that, and because I get a lot of anxiety, so see, when I drink, it used to take my anxiety away, but uh, I couldn't talk about my ma for years because it's, that affected my mental health, do you know what I mean? That, I think that's how I ended up with PTSD and stuff like that. So, when I used to talk about my ma, I would cry, you know what I mean? Uh, and I don't care what anybody says, I've done six, I've done nearly 11 years in the jail, you know what I mean? Aye, so all that stuff about hard men, like men, trying to cry because they're meant to hold their emotions back, it's a lot of, a lot of rubbish, mate, you know what I mean? When was the last time you cried and why? Um, I think the last time I cried was a few weeks ago when I'm on probation just now and my social worker started asking me questions about uh, my past and that, how how I got to where I got to, do you know what I mean? And uh, obviously I had to talk about my ma again and it's an emotional subject for me, do you know what I mean? So a, f a few weeks ago I was really upset, you know what I mean? And I cried. If you could say something to people who struggle, men who struggle with mental health, what would you say to them? What, what do you do that helps? Well, I think the best thing you can do is talk to people, you know what I mean? And that's all part of my hang in recovery, you know what I mean? Is that we have to connect with our people, you know what I mean? It's all about connection. If you hold these emotions in yourself, you know what I mean? You're never going to get help, you know what I mean? Well, I've had anxiety, man. I, I've been in a prison, so obviously the boys who spoke to there, yeah. they were in prison together, and uh, I, I had anxiety, but I got on tablets, and I'm better now, like, starting to go to the gym. Recently got uh, released from prison in March, so I'm trying to stay out. That's the longest I've been out, six months, and ten years, so wow. I'm 32 now, so just try to stay out, stay with positive people, and just don't sit with the crowd, innit? So, what, what was the last time you cried, and why? Mate, I, I only really cry like, if we're close like, some family. So I've got like, a close family unit, so I only cry like, if one of them were hurt or died. So when was the last time that happened? Um, I was in prison, my grand died. And I, I had to come from prison to go to the funeral. And I got to do the first bit. And then I, I got to cuddle everybody on the way the, when they were leaving. And I had to go, go back to jail. Most definitely they should. They should be feel free to express their emotions. like in, yeah, everybody should feel free to do that. Yeah. There's, there's this big, this big saying like men shouldn't cry. Why do you think that is? Like a lot of people would be saying that. I think it's something that's just developed over time, particularly in this culture, that you got, you've got to be seen to. Be, they think being strong equals not crying, which is not the case. You've got to uh, being strong means being able to also show your emotions and uh, part, crying is part of that. It's also part. It's very healing. Crying as well. And when was the last time you cried and why? Oh, I probably cried last week because I miss my mum. <laughs> How can yeah. you connect that you're in a toxic relationship? Okay, so basically, if you're in a toxic relationship, you can recognise it because the person is acting suspicious and they're like not being trustful to you. So you need to like, you need to be like on them. You need to stay like on it. Yeah, you need to be aware, be aware, because yeah. they don't let you go through that phone or nothing. So just be careful. Be careful. <laughs> It's dangerous. And then, dangerous. have you been in one? Can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, about the I've story? been in one. I'm not gonna say with who, but I've been in one, and it, it wasn't good. What happened? Yeah, uh, the person cheated on me. Oh, so, okay. and and they lied about it as well. So it's just it adds on stupid things. So you just need to be careful. What about yourself? Yeah. So they know who they are. Yeah, I ain't gonna say no names, but she done me very dirty. What did she you do? blocked me. And then she was phoning me, telling me like, oh, she likes this, she likes how things are going. The next day, I saw her here with another guy. Mm. It happens a lot, it happens a lot, and people, they don't even know about it. That's why they need to choose the right person. And then, like me. And so, right now, you're in a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, yeah, I'm in a good place here. So, 
for, for people or for somebody who's going through a toxic relationship right now, what advice can you give them to get out of it or to just recognize in one? You can, you can check their phone and you can ask them questions and if it is a toxic relationship, try and get over it quickly because it's going to be worse on yourself in the future. Just try to get out of the relationship as fast as possible. Um, when they accuse you of stuff uh, that you don't do, when they're just insecure and when they just need to like know everything about you all the time. Have you been in one? Can you tell us a little bit of the story? With Kelsey Flint. <laughs> what, um, what she was just constantly needing all my socials, needing to know where I am. She'd hit me if I'd done anything wrong. Okay. Aye, I know she's lucky I didn't punch her. Um, just you should just done no go, stay single, make money. And how long how long were you guys together? Four before, years. Before you broke? Four years. So what was the tipping point where you were like that's enough? Uh when she started sleeping with somebody behind my back when I was in hospital. Wow. I know. Very sorry about that. It's all right. And then if you could share like an advice to someone who's losing one, like what you know what they should do or whatever, you know. Uh, make sure they know I was cunt. That's my only that's my only advice. <laughs> so I think men should cry. The reason for it is it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. Back in historical days in the UK, you should, a man should be a man and a man shouldn't cry. However, in current times, I think it's really important that men do express themselves physically, mentally, spiritually and emotionally because it helps clear the mind of all the negativity. Mm. If, if you keep everything bottled up inside, all it's going to do is create more issues for yourself, uh, more mental issues. Um, so yeah, crying helps kind of clear the mind for me. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's for something negative or or positive. I'll give you an example. I cried when my daughter came into the world, when, when my daughter was born. And I looked and I thought, I help create this life. And when I look at her, I want to cry every time I look at her because I look at her as being part of me. And it's good to show emotion. Don't bottle your emotion up inside. Express your emotion. Mm. Whether it is good or bad, we need to get things out. And I always say it's good to talk. Don't bottle things up. Should men talk? Should men cry? Absolutely. It's good. After crying, you actually feel better after mm. crying as well. Mm. You know, and, and it's easy to, to smile than it is to frown. Really and I always say, live in the moment. Live in the moment, don't look forward to tomorrow, forget about yesterday, just live for the here and now. The world's a beautiful place and I'll leave it at that. I think they should. I think it's healthy, it's a natural expression of like frustration, anger, sadness. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with men crying. So, yeah, sorry. Um, I've had like various men in my life who've really struggled to cry, like and have felt like they don't want to kind of show weakness. Right, um, but I actually don't think it's a sign of weakness. I think it's a sign of strength, being able to have emotional intelligence and recognise that I'm upset, like I maybe need to cry a little bit, like let the emotions out and then I can move on. Whereas I feel like if people bottle it up, they, they can that's, like let it go. That's so powerful. The reason why I'm saying so powerful is because a lot of the time they will say like Girls who don't like uh, uh, girls who don't like a guy who cry. So for you, it's not. It's not. No, it's like men are human beings, just like women or any folks are. So like it's natural, it's normal. You look at animals; they cry when they're in pain or cry like for various different reasons. So yeah, no, I totally think that men, yeah, men crying is fine. And then, when was the last time you cried and why? Um, actually, it was earlier on this week because I was really, really unwell and I almost went into the hospital. So I was upset. I was like so unwell. So, oh, um, yeah, no, I just cried because of that because I was feeling low. But, yeah. So, uh, can you tell us three threats of toxic relationship that somebody can recognise in a relationship? Like a red flag. Yeah, red flag. Um, possibly like neediness, no? Like someone who constantly uh, has to know your location, where you're at. Uh, Another one might be lack of privacy, you know? If someone's been like, yo, I don't trust you, let me see your messages. Yeah. I want to see your messages. I want to see your Snapchat. Uh, and I would think the third, I would say a toxic relationship is if like, what if the person just has like horrible taste and uh, like if they like the Arctic Monkey, if they love the Arctic Monkeys or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I, actually, I, don't, I don't dislike the Arctic Monkeys. Okay. I grew up this I think if you feel like shit, then you probably shouldn't be in that relationship. Okay. It's as easy as that. Like, people should make you feel good about yourself and your life, not bad. So the next question is pretty much the, like, 
have you been if you've been in one can you tell us a little bit what happened if you've been in one i don't know i think it's hard to say but um yeah the same thing if you're with someone and you feel like you're losing a little bit too much of yourself i think this you that's probably like that yourself mm, not that i want to share to be honest Can but share the name? yeah just the, just the in, i mean in general no name drop no name drop no, I think, yeah, I think when people are really intense and as you had said, just like on your back constantly and you feel like you're policing yourself or, yeah, feel controlled to a degree, then I think that's just really unhealthy. Yeah. Have you been in one as well? Can you give us like some actual like details, like an example so people can relate to the story? Um, I feel like when you're in a toxic relationship, uh, you always maybe maybe like hit a point where you start realizing things are toxic, you know. It never starts off toxic, because then why would you get in a relationship anyway? Is that what but happened um, it's exactly what happened to myself. It's exactly what happened. Um, and and how, then after how long did you figure out like this wasn't? I don't know. Just things start getting sour, and maybe you started noticing it more than just like the time you spent together. That maybe something was off in the ambient, you know. But it's hard to bring that up to someone because it's like an invisible thing. Um, and yeah and then you sort of it takes bravery to bring that up and what do you think is the for people who may be going through one as we speak or people who are watching the video what do you think they should do if they find themselves in a they should uh, they should um open an account on field, field. on the dating app called oh, field okay. as a couple i'm actually oh, okay. anti and then I'm anti-dating app. Yeah. I'm gonna put that out there. My advice is don't go on a dating app and like find a hobby. Find a hobby. I find a yeah. hobby together. But with the abusive partner. With the abusive partner. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. Something that like you could work yeah. with each other and like, create like a nice rivalry oh, so maybe. You, so you think stay together. Stay together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you think you don't necessarily you don't necessarily need to break up that relationship, you can walk it out, is that what you mean? You can walk it out, you can walk anything out. All it takes is uh, I f to download Field uh, and then make an account together and say that you're looking for like a third person to join the relationship. <laughs> Would you agree with that? <laughs> I think that's not my style, but to each their own. That's pretty big. I respect that. F E. I just want to get sponsored by Field. I'm more yeah. like, I want to see if I can. Like, I think if I can say, walk like, this, hit me like, up hit and me then up. like drop your Instagram. Are you in a relationship currently? I'm not in a relationship. So I've just moved to London. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like... Uh, so if, if, if people... I've just, just moved to London, it's if, hard to... I'm wanna, in a relationship with my city. If people want to wanna, wanna get to know you, do you have an Instagram you, you want to share with, with people? Uh, DJ Michael. Uh, represented by healthy Phil Connor, you and Chambers. <laughs> They're my agents. Uh, I live in Bermondsey. Yeah, you should definitely. In the yard, in the compound, and 330 St. James Road. That is his address. <laughs> Anyone can come stay. There's Bro, loads. We, we do of have a lot here. of followers. I don't know if you're supposed to. It's 46,000. Yeah. Do you have 46,000 yeah, followers? I don't know. No, <laughs> you're going to have to. Delete it from the video. We're not going to show. I don't All know. All right. I can delete that part if you want. Okay, go for it. It's yeah. up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. probably delete it. I think it's quite funny. No. Leave it, leave it, actually. Leave it. All right. Where are your followers? Here? In Glasgow? I mean, in Scotland, yeah. But well, that's alright. They're not going to come to London, are they? No, they're not going to go to England. No. Okay. No. But thank you guys so much for the time. Really appreciate it.